Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today with our sponsor Christina at Needleworks Studio Canada we are going to have some fun. I have two dye pots going and this is because we are going to dye some awesome awesome yarn in two fun steps. Now in my steamer pan I currently have eight cups of water plus one tablespoon of white vinegar. And in the large pot, I have eight cups of water, and I'm adding a cup of vinegar. And so do you have a guess what we might be doing? Today we are gonna do some glazing, and I thought that it would be worth setting up uh, two pots at once, so that way we could dye the base color and then immediately go from here into our pot with everything still nice and hot. So fingers crossed that this will work as well as that I want it to. The yarn that we are using today is Knit Picks Hawthorne Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 80% superwash wool, 20% polyamid, which is like a type of nylon and it has a high twist to ply, which makes this yarn a great candidate for some glazing techniques. I did go ahead and pre-soak the yarn in plain tap water before adding it to our warm dye bath. And so with eight cups of water in here, um, there is a lot of water for it to be like a true low immersion, but we're gonna go and apply some fun colors to this uh, before we go and do the next step. Today we are going to use some Dermot Acid, Acid Dye Stock Solutions that I mixed about five weeks ago. Alright, and on this skein I'm going to use about a tablespoon of my approximately 1% stock solution of the yellow. Uh, brilliant yellow. And then at approximately the same time in my less perfect stock solution but again approximately 1% we are going to add some blue and oh this is giving us some speckles um, because it actually let's do like two tablespoons of blue I know that this yellow is a bit more potent um, but eh, that might be a little dark that's okay, we are going for it. <laughs> so we've just tossed on this color. We're gonna get greens, we're gonna get blue, we're gonna get yellow. And then, and there might be some white left behind, but then we are gonna go and glaze this. And we're gonna glaze it in red, which might end up looking a little crazy, but I really thought that it could be really, really fun to play around with this. So I'm gonna let this go for a couple minutes, uh, maybe five minutes, and then I might poke things around a little bit. After five minutes, curious, a lot of the color has absorbed. I see some tiny bits of blue, maybe where stuff is still like dissolving, but yeah, I mean, that is pretty darn good. Let's go ahead and flip this just to see. Okay, yeah. We've got, we've got some good color absorption in here. So let's get ready to glaze our yarn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I am just a wee bit excited. Sorry guys, I thought that I was filming during that. A tablespoon of dye is only 15 milliliters. And I went ahead and added a half cup or 118 milliliters of the uh, Dharma Fire Engine Red to our dye pot. And I use so much color because I know that this can start to read a little bit pink and I'm really hoping that we will get some like true dark red coverage. But now let's dip dye our yarn. And so I had my nylon zip tie on here, sort of draining a tiny bit of water over here, but okay, we're going to pop it in for, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how long. 
All right. One, two, three, four, five seconds. Woohoo. Could have gone longer. We're at a cranberry, not quite a deep, deep red. But uh, let me put this in a pan and then we will take a look at what this dip into the red created for us. That was just five seconds into the red. And ooh, it's cool. We've got some of the blue where it was darker definitely showed through. I'm not sure yet if this is feeling like glazed, like we have a thin layer on top. Maybe, maybe in parts. I want to sort of like untwist a little. Eh. I'm not sure if it feels super shallow versus like an over dye. Um, sometimes when like I feel like something is glazed, you see what looks like just almost a dusting of color over the top. But either way, um, I think that we got something really, really cool. And I am really excited to take a closer look at it. I'm surprised with the yellow as bright as it is. I'm not, I see some like hints of some yellow, but overall it does not feel orangey. I guess on camera it might look a little bit orange, but in person it is feeling like red with these hints of other colors. Um, so Woohoo! I think that's awesome! As we wait for that friend to cool, we have a lot of dye in our pot. So I'm gonna go grab some more yarn. I went looking, and you know who I have on hand? A stroll sock blank. This is currently dry, but why not use this for our leftover dye? And slowly just add more and more of it to our dye bath. Do, do, do. But you can see that the colors are reading as pink versus, ooh, it's looking almost a little orange in there now, as pink versus being like a true red. Maybe we just need a lot, lot, lot more color if we want to see those red tones, but we do have a really, really nice dipped gradient that will probably be mottled and a bit um, potentially speckled just because of the little resist from these knit stitches, but how's that for a fun no dye left behind? I was like, oh, we'll just make a semi-solid or do a dip dye, but and actually that water is pretty clear already. So that just shows how quickly these colors struck to the yarn. And just, you know, this little bit of time of dipping, it is clear. And there was a lot of dye um, between these two skeins that we used. Um, there was a lot of dye in here to begin with. I'm gonna turn off the heat here and let it cool in the pot. Um, just a little bit to absorb anything left, but I am really, really excited to see how these colors penetrated on the blank. I know that Christina is uh, a fiber artist herself, and so I really hope that you are enjoying um, this video and that you love the way that this yarn is turning out. I am really, really excited. I think layering colors is one of my new favorite techniques, and so I can't wait to see what this is going to look like dry. This pot is cold considerably. You can see all of that color is in our yarn. And this is just a lovely, lovely gradient from, I think we've got close to a red here, all the way to a pastel pink. Yeah, we can see that our glazed yarn, which was just in the pot for about five seconds, um, has a lot greater color intensity than the straw. The fiber contents between these two yarns are technically different, um, but uh, the, the blank is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, but um, they're pretty close overall. And now, just starting with some tap water. 
And maybe there's a hint of bleeding um, from our glazed friend. But most of this color is in the yarn. I'm now going to add a little bit of clear gesso. And sometimes this helps um, us see, yeah, if we're going to see some bleeding, this can help us see some bleeding. If I had to make a prediction for where this bleeding is coming from, it would be coming from the Hawthorne. Um, just because the dye bath on the blank was completely clear. But I imagine that after just a couple rinses, it will in fact clear. But I'd rather have any any extra dye come out now in the wash step than say if you knit something and are blocking it. But if you ever are using hand dyed yarn that has a deep saturated color, um, <laughs> be careful if say you're pairing it with white or something because you, know, you could get some bleeding. But even now, like our water is basically clear. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this a few more times and then hang it up to dry. And we'll come back and look at uh, the dry blank, we'll unravel the blank, and we'll like take a closer look at Christina's yarn. Here is our yarn and sock blank. As you can see, there was a lot of pigment in the Dharma Fire Red but I would still call this a pink. I think we've got a gradient from like a pastel pink all the way to more of a raspberry, but I don't think that I had enough dye there to truly get that deep, deep red that I see on the little swatch. So maybe if I was gonna do stock solutions with this one again, it'd be worth mixing up a 2% stock solution or just using a lot more of this color to try to bump that intensity from pink into red. Looking at both of these, you can definitely tell that they are color related. Um, and honestly, I am surprised by how, how much of the original blue and yellow is covered up by this pink. You see a little hint of orange and some of the blue shows through almost like speckles and splotches, but it's not feeling purple and I'm not feeling brown. Um, and I don't know, I think it looks really, really cool. Usually when people say glazing as opposed to just over dyeing, they're referring to a really shallow um, penetration of color. And this is something that you can kind of see a bit as you untwist the plies. You can see like in there that there's a paler section because the dye the yarn is in the pot for such a short period of time that the dye can strike it really, really fast, leaving um, this really shallow application. So in the red, I sort of expected it to feel more pink, but here's a spot where especially you can feel that it's really, really shallow. In my first attempt at glazing, I dyed a skein with pink and yellow and then dipped it into black. I had the same like, oh no, oh no, is it too long sort of panic moment. And I've tried this a few other times, but on that original video, actually yesterday, I got a really, really helpful comment. And it was to, instead of dunking the whole yarn in, dip a portion in it of the yarn into the pot for a second and then remove it. And then dip another portion and remove it. And doing this will allow you to get a little more even coverage of the glaze, have a little more control, but also have all of it in the pot for a shorter period of time, really letting you get that really light coverage. And then of course you could steam the yarn after to, um, to finish setting the color. Uh, so I think that there's a lot of ways to play around with this technique. And I am beyond excited to see where we go with this in the future. As for our blank, when we dip dyed this blank into our dye pot, there was a lot of acid in there. I forget now that I'm filming exactly how much, but there was a ton of acid in the pot. And so while we have something that looks like a relatively smooth gradient, we are definitely going to have like this speckly gradient. Um, as from even the palest section 
So I'm, I'm assuming that we'll see some kind of modeling down in the darkest section at the other end too. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and go and unravel this blank right now and I'll show you what it looks like. Oh my goodness, you guys. We've got speckles, reverse speckles of gloriousness here all the way through our pink gradient. Uh, we got some great resist because the acid content was so high that even with the dip dyeing, the color struck really, really fast, giving us this stunning speckled gradient. I still need to wet this to set the twist, but we have this beautiful, beautiful gradient from the baby pink all the way to that deeper raspberry color with speckles and a non-solid yarn throughout. Oh, this is gorgeous. Christina, I know that you are seeing your yarn for the first time in this video because your package is still on its way to you. But I really, really hope that you love this colorway that I created with you in mind. Christina at Neil Work Studio Canada, thank you so much for sponsoring this video. It almost feels a little bit like two videos in one because we got that bonus sock blank in there. But I just had so much fun uh, playing randomly with the blue and yellow and then attempting to glaze over it in the red. I think that I now have some tips from some other viewers on how to improve my glazing technique but, or maybe not approve, but tweak it and try some differences with it. I think that if I was able to leave the yarn in the red pot for a shorter period of time, we might have seen uh, more of the, the blue and yellow underneath it. But I think that we ended up with a stunning one of a kind colorway because even if I had had multiple skeins, um, and the pot at any one step, each one would still be slightly differently, slightly different, which is one of the best parts about these random kind of colorways. And as for that bonus yarn, it's not often that I just pump up the pH and add a ton of vinegar, unless it's something where I know that, okay, something in the condition might be a little more basic, so I need a lot more acid, but I'm really, really excited with this sort of speckled mottled gradient. I know that some people don't like this and they might prefer to see a smoother transition. However, in my opinion, one of the best things about having this kind of blank um, versus adding like, you know, some mini skeins into a pot one at a time is that you have that knit fabric and it's its own kind of resist. So. I am just thrilled with how uh, this Unraveled Sock Blank turned out. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for joining me today. If you are a huge Chemnitz fan and would like to sponsor a video like Christina at Needlework Studio Canada did today and receive some of the yarn that was dyed in your sponsored video, uh, you can find more details in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I have a link to the sponsorship listing in the video description and the iCard. Even if sponsorship might not be for you, my shop is filled with dozens of skeins of hand-dyed yarn dyed in past and upcoming Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube videos, so you should really go check it out. Finally, if you aren't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to this YouTube channel, give the video a like, and let me know what you'd like to see coming up in the comments. Thank you so much everyone for watching.